Hello and welcome to this space. No matter how you came across this video or how it was presented to you, one thing is for sure. This video was made for you. My name is Amy Torres and I've been providing support to families of children with special needs for many years in our community. Our goal is to provide a space where you can receive support as you continue to support your family. We seek to bring a message that although the journey of parenting may be difficult at times, you are not alone. I would love for you to meet two wonderful parents who will be sharing part of their journey and their story in a time where they too felt alone. Welcome, Paulina and Nancy. Thank you, Amy. Hi, Nancy. I'm Paulina. I'm the mother of two boys, uh, very smart and talented, 13 and 14 years old, both under the spectrum of autism. Hi, Paulina. Hi, Amy. My name is Nancy. I'm the mother of a, a beautiful, smart, and very funny guy, teenager, that has a diagnosis of autism. Together, we would like to begin a conversation about something that is very common upon parents. The following is thoughts and feelings of loneliness. I would love for Nancy and Paulina um, to begin to share a moment where they too felt alone. I remember one day being at a park with my closest friends and their babies. We were sitting at the grass near the playground when we hear a loud voice coming from the other side. It was a very angry woman asking for the mother of a child that seemed to be autistic in her words because of his lack of understanding. Uh, everybody turned themselves to that voice and I saw my son standing right next to her, like full of fear on his face. So I realized that I was the mother that she was calling for. Uh, he was terrified. I felt um, sad and, and broken because I was the only parent being called for having a different child and I didn't know what to do or what to say. So uh, I couldn't even move because my, my back was blocked and the pain paralyzed my legs. A couple of friends then uh, helped me manage my ride back home and I was just in shock, silent, confused. Um, I decided not to have any more playground days after that day. And um, it was just a uh, focus on, on finding a way to help my sons in the way they needed. Thank you. I understand what you're saying, Paulina, and I can't relate with that experience of feeling vulnerable and alone. When my son was one year old, we started uh, looking for uh, daycare centers. In that moment, we didn't have a diagnosis, but there were clear uh, developmental delays. So when I started uh, visiting the daycare centers, I was very honest explaining his situation. And every single time I heard the same answer, they didn't have any spot available. Later on, I decided to, to change the approach and ask general questions about the functioning of the daycare center. And only when they told me that there were spots available, that was the moment when I explained uh, his delays. I could see right away how their body language changed they made excuses. They told me that somebody will call me later to confirm the, the situation. I visited more than 30 daycare centers and nobody called me back. Thank you both for sharing such rich and personal experience with all of us. Uh, I can definitely see a lot of difficulties and a lot of challenges in both stories. One thing that we do want to acknowledge is that every parent's journey and story is different. This is why we want to share some other difficulties that other parents may be encountering. Some of them include, number one, awareness of your child's different development. This may be realizing that your child is not meeting their milestones or receiving a diagnosis from a professional. Number two, fears which can be paralyzing many of the times. Number three, feeling overwhelmed, which may not allow you to see any other way out in that moment. Number four, feeling like you need to take care of things on your own. These feelings may stem from our culture or our childhood upbringing. 
And number five, the judgment of others. We're constantly asking ourselves, what are others going to say? What are others going to think? And this is why we want to continue to support. Uh, I would love for you all to share um, what you believe were some of the things that led to your experience. After processing all the consequences of my experience, uh, I realized that there is a lack of awareness on differences and behavior and development of our children. And unfortunately, there is still a stigma uh, transferred to them, and it's a negative label that causes re rejection and misjudgment. Years later, when I had the opportunity to learn more about how the systems work, I realized there is a lack of uh, proper uh, disability training for daycare centers. This factor and, and the one that also Paulina mentioned, the bias against children that look and learn in a different way. So related to both of your experiences, I would love to know what happened next. What did you do? What were some of the strategies that helped you move forward? Um, in my case, self-education and conversation with knowledgeable people were the key. I started like um, asking all the professionals involved to help my sons about questions and uh, getting information related. Um, at the age of three, I had my son enrolled in his first pre-K ESC program at a public school, and I found a wonderful teacher, and she was never too tired or too busy to answer my questions. So she was helping me throughout the day with my son, hand to hand, and then after school she was sharing with me information um, about providers, resources, uh, situations that I will encounter throughout this pathway. Um, then she was like a mentor to me and in a very crucial period of my life. Uh, then I realized that my role not only as a mother, but also as a role model in my son's lives and I felt more confident and encouraged, and I decided to take steps to the outside world again. I used the pain that I felt from the rejection as a force to continue. I said to myself that I couldn't give up because I have a family to fight for. So I started educating myself and, and searching different resources, and I found a family expo that was coming into the area where I live. That day I was very early in the morning walking every single stand until I found an inclusive daycare. Finally, when we uh, start attending, uh, I, I couldn't uh, believe that I was seeing other families with similar situations, other kids with similar uh, delays. So I didn't waste time and I approached uh, some moms so we could share together the different uh, fears and hopes that we have. I want to thank you both for sharing um, these great strategies that worked for you and that were uh, amazing for you. Now, I want to share strategies that may have been used by other parents. Um, number one, to look within yourself. It's very beneficial to find your emotions and check in with yourself and your feelings as well. Number two, self-care. We are constantly told not to pour from an empty cup, but the reality is that the majority of us do it. Number three, reaching out and spending quality time with those around us. Quality time is known as a love language, and this is definitely shows the importance and the significance as well as the benefits that we may receive from it. Number four, finding other families. In networking and building with other families, we will definitely get to see that all families need support at times and that all families experience challenges and difficulties. Number five, support groups. Today, these can be found online and in person. We all would benefit from sharing our experience and learning from the experience of others with the proper support. I want to thank Nancy, Paulina, and every parent watching out there. We hope that this was a safe space for you and it provided support. 
If you know anyone that may benefit from this video, please feel free to share it with others. We hope to continue to support one another in this journey. Until next time.